So let me talk to you a little bit about the most common questions people have uh, about baptism. And of course, first is, what does it mean? What is the meaning of baptizing? Putting somebody under the water and, and bringing them back out. Well, let me read you what the Bible says. This is Romans chapter six and what it says about baptism. This is what happens in baptism. When we went under the water, we left our old life of sin behind us and it was buried. And then when we came up out of the water, we entered into a new life of grace. And that's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we're lowered into the water, it's like the burial of Jesus. And when we're raised up out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a new forgiven life. Now, what that verse says, and several others in the Bible, say that baptism has three main meanings. First, baptism publicly declares that you believe in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. The Bible says we are buried with Christ in baptism. In the Bible, baptism is always a symbol of a burial and a resurrection. That Jesus Christ died, was buried in the ground, and then he rose again. But number two, it's also a picture of what happens to you. It, it publicly declares that you have been forgiven and that your old life has been buried and you don't have to feel guilty about it anymore uh, and that you've been given a brand new life starting over, that Jesus Christ and God forgives everything and forgets everything prior to your commitment to him. Here in uh, Lake Forest on the wall by our baptism pool is 2 Corinthians 5.17, which says this. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So when we baptize someone, they're saying, I'm dying to all my old way, my old sins, the things that made me, tied me down, and I'm, I'm beginning a brand new, fresh new life in Christ. Now, baptism does not make you a believer. It shows that you are a believer. Baptism doesn't save you and get you into heaven. Baptism shows that you're saved and you're getting into heaven. What, the only thing that gets you saved and into heaven is your faith in Christ, the commitment you made. And so baptism is just an outward symbol of a decision you made in your heart. I call it the wedding ring of the Christian life. This ring doesn't make me married. I could lose it and I'd still be married. But this ring shows that I'm married and it shows that I'm not ashamed to say that I'm married. One day, 41 years ago, I stood up in front of a bunch of people and publicly, like baptism is a public uh, proclamation, publicly declared uh, two words to my wife. Because on my wedding day, I said two words, I do. I had no idea what I was doing when I said those two words. And uh, in fact, uh, I, I didn't understand all the implications of it. The rest of my life, I've been figuring out the implications of two words, I do. And today, 40 plus years later, Kay will often remind me that's in the fine print of I do. That's part of it. I did? Yeah, okay, I do. And, and, and so that made me married. Now, how would it be if I said to my wife, honey, I love you, I want to be married to you, and I'm really committed to you, but I want to keep it a secret. I don't want to tell anybody about it. And I don't want to wear a wedding ring because I don't want anybody to know publicly that I'm married to you. She'd go, what kind of love is that, Buster? That's no love at all. Are you ashamed of me? Are you ashamed to publicly declare your commitment to me? And, and a, a Christian who is ashamed of Jesus and will not get all wet for Jesus, will not get baptized for Jesus, saying, I, I'm ashamed. I don't want to wear the wedding. I want to be married to you, but I don't want to wear the wedding ring. So baptism actually uh, proves that you're a part of God's family. The Bible says that baptism is the door to the church. It's, it's the door to being a part of the family of God. It's the way you publicly identify, I'm all in. I, I'm in the body of Christ. I'm in the family of God. How are people going to know? What's your wedding ring? And so baptism shows that you are really in the body of Christ. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're baptized by one spirit into the body, into one body. And so uh, that's, that's the importance of it. Now, the question then is, why should I be baptized? Why should I be baptized? And there are actually four reasons 
the Bible says everybody who's a Christian should be baptized. Now, I'm not talking about baptism as a little kid. I'm talking about the kind of G baptism Jesus did when he was 30 years old as an adult. Uh, it was his decision. Now, there are four reasons you should be baptized. First, Jesus set the example. Okay, he set the example. He, um, uh, he was baptized. Anything Jesus did, you should do too. If Jesus did it, you should do it. And everything he did, he did to model for us. So Jesus, at 30 years of age, went down to the Jordan River and was baptized by John, put onto the water, and then brought back out, symbolizing his death, his burial, and resurrection, which hadn't yet happened, but was going to happen. So Jesus set the example. Number two, God commands it. Over and over again in Scripture, we are commanded by God that if you really are a true believer, you'll be baptized. Now, uh, one of the last things Jesus said before he went back to heaven is called the Great Commission. And this church, Saddleback Church, was built on that statement, which says this, go to all the world and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, so we do that. Now, the third reason you ought to be baptized is it shows that you are a believer. It is your, your coming out party. It's your debutante ball. It's your public statement saying, I am not ashamed to say I love Jesus Christ. Now, baptism doesn't say, well, I'm going to be perfect or I'm never going to sin again. Of course, you're, not gonna, you're going to sin. Baptism just says, this is where my heart is. My heart is, I want to honor God. And if Jesus said, do it, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, then I'm going to follow his commandments. I once had a little uh, boy come up to me and he said, Pastor Rick, when can I get advertised? And I like that because that's what really baptism is. Baptism is an advertisement for Jesus. It's saying to the whole world, I'm not ashamed. I love God. I love Jesus. I'm, I, I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm willing to get my hair wet for it. I, I, it's a humble exp expression of saying, I'm, I'm advertising my faith to the whole world. And then there's a fourth reason why you should be baptized, and it's this. I don't want Jesus to be ashamed of me in heaven. Now, I put this verse on, on your outline, so those of you who are uh, in the worship center can read this. Matthew 10, these are the words of Jesus. Very important verse, listen to this. Those who publicly declare that they belong to me. That's baptism, a public declaration uh, uh, of your faith. Those who publicly declare that they belong to me, I will do the same for them before my Father in heaven. That's what Jesus said. But, and here's the, here's the scary part, those who reject me publicly, I don't want anybody to know. I don't want to publicly declare my faith. Those who reject me publicly, I will reject before my Father in heaven. So if you really have the Lord in your heart, you need to be baptized. Now, some people will say, well, wait a minute. Um, I, was, I was baptized as, uh, as a baby. Um, uh, why should I be baptized uh, underwater uh, as an adult? And again, the Bible gives us four reasons, four reasons for this. Uh, number one, it's because Jesus was baptized that way. I told you, Jesus was 30 years old. Uh, uh, it was his decision. Now, as a, as a baby, Jesus was dedicated. There's nothing wrong with that. Many of us in our church were baptized as babies. And, and that's, a, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great. In fact, I honor your parents for having them do that because it was saying, we want this child to be raised in the Lord. But the truth is, if you were baptized as a baby, you don't even remember it. It wasn't your decision. It was your parents' decision. And so uh, Jesus, as a baby, was dedicated in the temple. But as an adult, 30 years later, said, okay, this is my faith now. And he, as an adult, went and was baptized in, in the Jordan River. So uh, Jesus was baptized uh, by immersion. Second reason is it's the only way to symbolize a death and a burial and a resurrection. And the Bible says that's what baptism's all about, to show the death and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, there are some churches, and these are good churches. We have nothing against them. Uh, they, they sprinkle uh, water, or they, they pour water, or they, they do a little dip, or they put a little here on your forehead. Why do they do it? Just a matter of convenience. It has, it's not in the Bible. It's just a matter of convenience. In fact, for 1,200 years, uh, all Christians were baptized underwater, and then they just started doing some more convenient ways. We like to do it the old-fashioned way. We like to way, do it the way Jesus said to do it because it is the only way to illustrate a death and a burial and a resurrection, and that's the meaning of baptism. 
Now, there's a third reason. It's because that's what the word means. The word baptism means to dip under water. You know, the, ba the word baptism is not an English word. It, it wasn't translated. If they had translated it, they would say dip under water. They just put the Greek word in there, baptizo. And, and, and baptizo simply means to dip under water. You can go to any Greek dictionary on the planet Earth, and every dictionary will tell you baptizo means to dip under water. So when I wash dishes, I baptizo those dishes under the water. I baptize those dishes. And, and, and when, I when I wash my clothes, I don't just sprinkle a little water on them and go, well, they're clean. No, no, I, I dip them, I dunk them uh, under water. And the word literally means to dip or to dunk under water. And then the fourth reason is because every single baptism in the Bible uh, was by immersion, by putting people uh, under the water. Now, even the churches that, that practice more convenient methods, uh, they wouldn't disagree with what I just said. Uh, in fact, all of the founders of these different denominations actually believed uh, the same thing that I just taught you. Let me read you some direct quotes. Uh, Martin Luther. Martin Luther was, was a great Christian man who founded the Lutheran church. We love Lutheran churches. They're great churches. Here's what Martin Luther said. I would have those who are to be baptized to be entirely immersed as the word imports and the mystery signifies. That's Martin Luther, okay? How about this guy, John Calvin? John Calvin's another great Christian. Calvin founded all of the Presbyterian churches or the Reformed churches or the Calvinist churches. And here's what John Calvin says in Calvin's Institutes, quote, the word baptize signifies to immerse, to put underwater. It is certain that immersion was the practice of the ancient church. Okay, so all Presbyterian churches, their, their leader w uh, said this, agreed. Okay, how about this, John Wesley. John Wesley, a great Christian leader, we love John Wesley, he, he founded the Methodist churches and all the different kinds of Methodists. And, and Wesley said this, quote, we're buried with him, Christ, in baptism, alluding to the ancient manner of baptizing by immersion. Just as Christ was raised from the dead, so we also will be raised by the same power, will rise again. This is what our very baptism represents. Now, many people at Saddleback Church, many of us were raised Catholic. Uh, let me read you what the Catholic Encyclopedia says. In fact, if you go ask a priest today to baptize you by immersion, he'll do it. He'll, he'll do it. Catholic Encyclopedia says this. The biblical form of baptism was unquestionably immersion. In, in the Bible. In the Catholic Church, quote, immersion seems to have prevailed until the 12th century. So, so really, all of the different uh, denominations still agree that the biblical way to do it is just more convenient to do other way. We like to do it the way they did it uh, in the Bible. Now, uh, when or who should be baptized? And the answer uh, to who should be baptized is anybody who believes. If you believe, you should be baptized. Now, you shouldn't be baptized until you believe, which by the way is why we don't baptize children until they're old enough to believe. We want them to make that decision on their own. But there is no requirement for being baptized except to be a believer. You don't have to promise to never sin, you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be mature. There's nothing that says you have to take all these classes or go through this course or learn this catechism uh, or you have to be a certain uh, age. No, as soon as you're old enough to believe, you're old enough to, to be baptized. And this is all through scripture. Acts chapter 2, 41, those who believed were baptized. Acts 8, 13, Simon believed and was baptized. Acts 8, 12, those who believed Philip were then baptized, both men and women. And on and on, every baptism in the Bible is what's called believer's baptism. Believers, everybody who was baptized in the Bible was, was already a believer. Now, some churches practice, as I said earlier, what we call a baptism of confirmation. There's nothing, nothing wrong with this. In fact, I honor if you were baptized away, if you were confirmed, God bless you and God bless your parents. Because it was saying, I'm committing uh, my children to Christ. And here at Saddleback, we do baby dedications all the time. We just don't baptize them until they're old enough to understand. But we do dedications. And that baptism of confirmation is between the parents and, and the Lord saying, we want to raise this kid in the godly way, and, and we want to raise this kid in the Christian faith. And as I said, Jesus 
was dedicated when he was eight days old. But when he became an adult at 30 years of age, he went down and was immersed by John the Baptist in, in the Jordan River. So I would encourage you to do that. Now here's some common questions. Can my family be baptized together? The answer is, yeah, of course they can. If everybody believes, then they can all be baptized together. Uh, I, right here in this pool, I once baptized a family of seven, mom, dad, and five kids. And all the kids had given their life to the Lord, and it was a wonderful expression. So um, some people ask, well, you know, I was baptized uh, eight years ago or 10 years ago, and my spouse has just come to Christ, my wife, my husband. Uh, is it okay to be baptized with them again? Of course it is. Can you be baptized more than once? Of course you can. Do you take communion more than once? Of course you do. And, and the, Jesus gave us two symbols, baptism and the Lord's Supper. You take communion more than once, it's okay to be baptized as a, as a recommitment of your life to Christ. Uh, and I, I've said this before, if you ever go on a trip to, to Israel, to the Holy Land, and somebody offers you an opportunity to get baptized in the Jordan River, do it, okay, do it. It'd be a good spirit. It's, it's just an opportunity to say, I'm recommitting my life to Christ. And so if you want to be baptized again with your spouse, that, that, that's fine. Uh, and and no, no problem with that. I will say this. Baptism is a personal issue. So don't wait on other people necessarily to be baptized because you might wait a long, long time. And it's between you and God. So you should go, if you've been, uh, uh, come to Christ, you need to go ahead and be baptized now, uh, uh, even before your spouse or somebody else. And when they do it, if you want to be baptized with them, that's, that's okay. But families can be baptized together. Question, next question. Will I have to say anything? No. <laughs> no. Because you're actually saying, making a statement by the act. You're, you're going into the water and being lowered and raised is saying, I believe in the death and resurrection of Christ, and I believe my sins have been forgiven, washed away, and, and I'm a new person. That's all, that's all you need to say, because your statement is, is actually your actions. Um, what should I wear uh, when I'm baptized? We don't have to worry about that here at Saddleback because we provide uh, shirts and shorts and hot towels all ready for you. Uh, so I say it's just kind of a Nike baptism, just do it. And in just a minute, I'm going to invite you to turn to the person next to you, your spouse or friend, and say, hey, man, let's go do this.